ladies, we are back and we are going to be doing something that I'll be honest with you, I have never done with Close to My Heart inks. Um, I usually use um, the Tim Holtz Distress inks and they work perfectly for this technique, um, but we're going to kind of play with it and see how it works out using Close to My Heart inks. I can tell you that it works beautifully with the Tim Holtz inks, but they are designed with unique properties um, to react with water. I think we're going to do just fine, although with a little bit different effect, doing the same technique with our Close to My Heart ink. So I have three inks here. I have the Blossom, the Pansy, and the Lemon ink in front of me. So I'm going to start with the Lemon. I'm going to pull up my sleeve, and I know you're probably thinking it's summer. Why in the world do you have a jacket on? Well, I get cold, even in the summer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my pad and I'm just going to rub it right there. And with the lemon, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but I'm just rubbing it on my surface. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my blossom, but I don't really want to touch that if I can avoid it because I don't want to mix the colors. Um, but I'm going to just kind of rub my blossom in there as well. Okay, so I'm rubbing it on there. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing with my pansy down here a little bit. Probably overlapping, hopefully we'll be okay. So now we have three different ink, um, inks there on our spot. Now I like to make um, this shimmering water. You, If you don't have, I actually make this myself. Um, I buy um, Perfect Pearls and mix them with water to make different shimmer um, paints. If you don't have that though, just plain water will work. It'll just have a different effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to spray it over the top of what I just put down there. And you can see that bead up right on my mat, just like that. And it, you can actually see it quite well. So now I have a piece of cardstock that I have already um, cut. And it's not a very large piece of cardstock because I was using a scrap, but I am going to set that right in my ink. And I'm just gonna kind of smoosh it around a little bit. I don't care if it gets on the back side because that's not going to show anywhere. And I'm just kind of smooshing that around. And so now I have this fun little piece. Now, you can't really probably see it that well on camera, but there is some shimmer to it because that's what the Perfect Pearls does. So I'm going to set that aside to let that dry a little bit. And I have used um, this stamp. I believe it's called Hello Baby. Um, let me grab it. got so many projects going because I've shot these videos back to back I changed my mind but anyway this is the stamp set um, and it goes it coordinates with the flower market cartridge and it will actually be discontinuing soon so when it's gone it's gone because they're not going to replace it so what I've done is I've grabbed my paint brushes and I'm going to use this same paint and pick it up to paint my elephant now if you know me at all you know that I'm a purple girl so we are going to use the pansy and I am just going to paint. Now, the, the part that you didn't see that I did prior to coming on camera was I um, took my black ink and I actually used clear embossing powder. And the reason I did that is it creates a little bit of a barrier, although I still am getting out of the lines. So it would be easier if I actually set it down, but then I would be off camera. Let's, see, let's scoot this over like this. There we go. Um, do it there, and um, we're just going to paint our elephant. Let's grab the larger brush to do those larger areas, and I do have water off camera over there, um, but let's get these areas in there. So basically what I'm doing is I'm using my regular inks to create a watercolor effect for my elephant. So you can see yet another reason why I love this mat. Now I still have ink there um, that I could go back in if I had some 
different things that I wanted to do backgrounds with but see how fun that is it just gives that a fun pop of color um, to do things with now one other thing that I could do is I could take the edges of my card almost like we did when we were doing the embossing only now I'm using the pink and I could well we will go back in and do the same thing with the yellow and pick up some of that yellow to kind of give it just a fun watercolor fill. So now I'm going to just set that aside. I'm going to spritz up my yellow again because it's starting to dry. And it would probably be best if your paper was dry, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to go back through and pick up some of that yellow, and that will help us tie all of those colors together. Now, remember that I told you that this cleans off very easily, and that is so true. All I'm going to do is grab a baby wipe. Now, if you were using hot glue, it would take a little bit more than this. I'm gonna grab a baby wipe, and I'm gonna wipe all of that off, and my mat will be as good as new. Now, I did mention um, at, in the first video that we were going to use our watercolors um, during these lessons, and I, since deciding to use my inks as watercolors, I've decided not to do the watercolors, but you could do the same or similar techniques using your watercolors. Now I want to do a card, and I don't want to take the time to wait for everything to dry, so you may recall I said we could use our embossing tool. So um, that's mostly dry. It's dry enough for me to work with. I'm just gonna, going to um, stop the video for a minute because I forgot to grab card bases to work with. And I'll be right back and we'll finish off this card. Okay, ladies, I am back and I have already put my part card base together. So what I did is I just pulled a white daisy cardstock um, base that I had from close to my heart. And then I pulled out the whimsy paper pack and I found the coordinating colors to match our background and I cut them just in eighth inch, inch increments that way I could put all three colors on there but just have little hints of them so basically so this is a four and a quarter by five and a half so I went down to four and an eighth to five and three eighths and then I just went down by an eighth of an inch each time so that gives me about a sixteenth inch border all the way around so now I'm going to decide what I want to do with my card now I could have fussy cut this and and done it but I decided I didn't want to do that because I wanted more of a break so I just cut um, a square for the imp for the elephant which we had already worked on because we already had talked about um, how that we would go around the edges to give it that little extra pop of color. So now I'm going to play with it. We could put this down here, kind of in the corner. We could add some fun bows or something, or we could do it this way. Um, and actually, I'm thinking I want to go like this so that I have a place to stack my sentiment on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by stamping my sentiment. Now from the same set, um, there is this one that says, I'll love you forever. Now, when my kids were little, that was um, a book, well, when my son was little, um, was when I learned about that book, I'll Love You Forever. And I absolutely loved that book, and so I thought this would be perfect for a cute little baby card. And then I'm going to have a girl baby card already. So if I don't have time to make one, the next time I need one, it's going to be all ready to go. Now I'm choosing black ink because I want a really crisp image. Now what I notice on my ink pad is that I have a mess of whites over here. What I notice on my image, on my stamped image, is there's some fuzz in there. So I'm going to clean that off and start over because that will definitely mess up everything if I put that that way. So let's clean off the pad really well. Maybe time to grab out some. Uh, I probably should think about cleaning that with some good stamp ink. But let's see. Before I actually stamp it onto my card because I don't want to mess it up, I'm going to pull off a piece of scrap. And make sure that I don't have any fuzz 
okay, we're good. No fuzz left behind. So we are going to do I'll Love You Forever. And if you've read the story, you know it says I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. I'm going to kind of put this up in that corner just a tad, just like that. I'll love you forever. I'll clean that off. I'm not too worried about getting it super clean because I think I just really need to clean that stamp. So, as I'm looking at that, I thought about putting a piece of ribbon um, on it. And as I look at the close to my heart ribbon, I think it would be a little bit much because the close to my heart ribbon that I have has all sorts of um, shapes and colors and this is already a busy enough card. But what I could do would be grab a piece of sheer ribbon. So let me do that. I have this ribbon for from a company that I that's no longer in business. It's called Three Girl Jam. But there is a piece of pink that I think would be just perfect. I loved my Three Girl Jam ribbon. So thankful I have a good stash of it since they're out of business. But I'm just going to come over here, cut that off, give me plenty of extra room so I can decide if I want a knot or a bow. The one tool that we did not talk about in our first video of this particular series is twist that so that it's smooth is a corner rounder. A corner rounder comes in different shapes and sizes. Um, you can get small ones that work um, like a, a small punch and then you can get larger ones such as the crocodile. I'm going to grab my larger one because I think I'm going to want to use it, but isn't that already pretty? So I'm going to turn this upside down and the twist in the back doesn't bother me because it's I'd rather it be in the back than the front. Now obviously if this is a card you're going to mail, you're going to need a padded envelope or something with some extra postage on it because it is going to be bulky with that ribbon on there. But we're just gonna sim shimmer or center that there. And honestly, I almost could just go with a card just like that because it's busy and fun and I think it's really cute and you could leave that card right there and be done with it. But let's go ahead since we have the elephant already and put our elephant on it. I'm gonna grab my corner rounder that I was talking about. This is a, a corner chomper, but they also come in small ones and we have them at close we have corner rounders at close to my heart that look completely different than this so don't be fooled by the way this looks but simply all it does is it rounds the corners and i think that that will kind of sharpen up that image just a little bit now i could actually i think that i will put this on some foam tape as well I have to say I am loving the way this card is coming together. I also have to say that after making these two cards and doing all these videos on, or these three videos on the different tools, you should see the mess on my desk and floor. I'll have to spend some time cleaning that up. So I'm going to kind of, I'm not going to center, I'm going to put it more in the bottom corner to kind of balance. And there we have our finished card. Isn't that cute? Lots of fun things you can do using the supplies that you already have and some simple tools to make some great fun things to be a blessing to your friends and family. So thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks so much for joining me on this 101 journey. Um, my life is definitely changing right now. I'm getting ready to make a major move across the country. Um, and so I'm not sure how soon I'll be back and ready to do more videos, 
but perhaps in the future we'll be back up and running and we can start card making 102. So thanks so much for stopping by today and remember, take some time to enjoy the little things. Have a great day. Bye.